What's the story, Morning Glory? What is up, Buttercup? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for another review of Married at First Sight, Season 14, Episode 2, Nice Day for a Wicked Wedding. So let us start off with the wedding of Jasmina and Michael. Yes, y'all. So Jasmina woke up that morning feeling pretty excited, feeling pretty confident, and I thought that she was going to be able to keep herself together. But as we saw later, that really wasn't the case. So she talks about how she never saw examples of any successful marriages in her family. And hopefully this one um, will be different. Hopefully her and Michael will sustain the test of time and that uh, they will have a forever marriage. Now, Mer Michael in his suite with his groomsmen and his family, he's beginning to overthink it. He's beginning to get really, really, really nervous. Um, his sisters and his brothers arrive. Um, I'm sorry, his sisters and his brother arrive. I think he only has one brother. His other brother was killed. And his brother Ralph pins a pink ribbon on his lapel in remembrance of his mother who died of breast cancer. Now, he says his mother is still with him in spirit. So that is comforting for him. And neither Jasmina nor Michael have their biological mothers in their lives anymore. Michael's mother passed away. Jasmina's mother abandoned her. So hopefully this will, um, of course, you know, it's a, it's, it's a sad situation, but they would be able to depend on each other. If any time that they are having a bad day, or if it's like their mother's birthday, or if it's mother's day or something like that and you know they're feeling you know pretty down the other will understand what they're going through and they will be able to be a good support system for each other so that's the one good thing about neither one of them that's the one good thing about them sharing something in common that is tragic but at least they can they would be able to understand each other better uh and be there for each other so as the day goes on and as she's getting ready, Jasmina gets more and more and more nervous. She says that every single emotion is now hitting her all at once. And it just like basically came out of nowhere. Now there is a scene where um, her mother comes into the into the bridal suite and Jasmina just starts crying. She completely loses it and she starts crying. Now, Michael, he walks out to the altar. Now, one thing that I haven't noticed in Jasmina and Michael's wedding and in Lindsay and Mark's wedding is when the groom walks out and they stand at the altar, they don't greet the bride's family like they've done in previous seasons. Because I distinctly remember the groom would um, greet the bride's family especially like the mother or the father, whoever was sitting in the front row. And that didn't happen for Lindsay and Mark. And it didn't happen for Jasmina and Michael. I wonder if they just stopped doing that or the, the guys didn't think about that or what. Anyways, moving on. So he walks out to the altar and it just hits her that she's marrying a stranger. And it's like, well, what a time for it to hit you, girl, right before you're supposed to walk down the aisle. Now, there's a scene where she's standing with her mother because her mother's going to walk her down the aisle. She's standing with her mother and it's right before she was supposed to walk down the aisle and she said a profanity and her mother was like, just calm down. And Jasmina says, there's no way I can calm down. That's just not going to happen. So the bridesmaids, they all walk out. And then Jasmina, she says, you know, I'm praying that this man is the man that I've been asking for. So she walks down the aisle with her mother. And as soon as he saw her, he said, wow. And that was a, such a beautiful moment to me when he said, wow, like he was just so amazed by her beauty and it just like took his breath away. And I thought that was just really amazing. So when they're at the altar, they're exchanging their vows and everything. And I understand that they're nervous. I get it that they're really, really nervous. And, um, they're not aware of what they're doing and all of that. But I do wish that they would have just locked eyes. I think that would have been just, you know, so romantic if while the the, the pastor or the officiant is uh, 
saying whatever they're saying uh, because you know they give the speech about what his family said about him and what her family said about her um at that moment i wish they just would have locked eyes but anyways moving on so they exchanged their own personal vows and then they did kiss and it was a really sweet kiss on the lips and then after that they did the traditional jump the broom and then um while they were walking back down the aisle um michael tells her you know we got a strut so anyways they walked down the aisle and it was beautiful. The actual wedding ceremony was, was really beautiful. Um, I have no complaints. So Jasmina, she feels a lot better after the ceremony. No, I do have one thing to say though. Um, Michael's burgundy suit. I understand that a lot of people, they don't want to do the whole traditional black tuxedo thing. Um, they want to give it their own little flair. They want to kind of stand out a little bit, which is fine. Um, when he first wanted the burgundy suit, I was a little bit uh, hesitant about that, but it was okay. I think her bouquet ended up sort of matching his burgundy suit pretty well. So it turned out being, you know, it was fine, whatever. So, um, after the ceremony and they go off to just be alone, just the two of them, Jasmina starts to feel a little bit better. So I guess it was just the whole anticipation of it starting and her meeting him for the first time that got her so, so crazy. But after all of that was said and done, she started feeling a whole lot better. So they have their little alone time. And he says, you know, my wife is beautiful. He says, you know, he, he is very, very pleased. He said that she looks like a beautiful black Barbie. And uh, he is not disappointed at all. They do give a toast. I think he ended up drinking his because they both had a glass of champagne and he started drinking his and she was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? We're supposed to toast. So he refills his glass and they give a toast to new beginnings, being open and honest and always staying on the same page. Yeah. We'll see about that. So uh, they start talking and telling each other about themselves. And she says that she is a night owl. She'll stay up until two o'clock in the morning watching Korean drama shows. Um, he says he doesn't watch TV at all. And yeah, he says he doesn't watch TV at all. I think he even said he really doesn't even go to the movies. She says she's really into, was it Star Trek? No, Marvel. She's really into Marvel. And he is not so yeah we'll see how that goes that's really no big deal they'll work it out then at the reception they have their first dance and i think the first dances are always really awkward on married at first sight it's just weird to me is that how it's done in regular weddings i haven't been to a lot of weddings and is that how it's done where it's like the bride and groom will dance alone and then everyone is just sitting down watching them that just seems really awkward i would want the first dance to be among everybody else dancing as well not just you know us on the dance floor by ourselves and everybody watching us so they have their first dance and it seems you know it seems natural you know they're holding each other naturally and it doesn't seem that much that awkward and um Michael says that he does feel an attraction for her and Jasmina says that she felt a little spark nothing big because they really don't know each other okay so that is the wedding of Michael and Jasmina um it's hard to say you know exactly if you know how I feel about them as a couple based on their wedding she wasn't repulsed okay let's just say that she wasn't repulsed she you know I think she I don't remember her saying if she thought he was attractive or if she thought he was handsome maybe she did but I missed it uh so she didn't you know she had nothing negative to say about him at all um I don't know. I just still feel like Michael is a little bit intense. Like he's a little stiff. Um, his sisters keep talking about how, well, not keep talking about, but in the uh, matchmaking special, his sisters told Pastor Cal that he's the life of the party. He's a class clown, comedian, all of that. I have yet to see that in Michael. He does have a sense of humor. It's a very dry sense of humor. I just don't see him as this goofy guy letting loose being real silly. I don't see him that way at all. He really seems stiff, really serious, really um 
uptight but we'll, you know, we'll see how things go maybe she can loosen them up a little bit so let's move on to Lindsay and mark Lindsay and mark have already done their done their ceremony um Lindsay says she feels great she says that um she feels like he's very genuine and that he's a very kind man now Lindsay is also very lit at her reception and at her at her wedding because she drunk a whole bunch on her way to the wedding so i don't know if she even knows what she's talking about so i don't know how seriously to take what she's saying because she's you know three sheets to the wind Lindsay is concerned about the whole cat situation because he's got three and she's got two and I don't understand what the deal is with the cats if you have cats and he has cats what is wrong with y'all having cats together is it because is she allergic and like too many cats will wake up her allergies or what's the deal with having too many cats um they both like cats I thought she would have been happy about them both liking cats but she's doesn't like that situation and she said she said that she's even willing to give up her own cats I don't understand so Mark says you know my wife is a wild child but he likes it uh she'll get him out of his routine that seems like that will definitely happen and they also took really nice pictures I like the pictures that they took I also like the pictures that Jasmina and Michael took as well now neither of their moms showed up Mark's mom is in a facility, a rehab facility, uh, I think for physical rehab. And Lindsay's mom, um, she didn't show up because her and Lindsay are very much estranged. So Lindsay asks Mark, so your mom didn't show up? And he said no. And uh, she goes, it's a tough situation. And he was like, yeah. And Lindsay says, same here. So they're going to talk about that later. Mike, I mean, excuse me, Mark to me. Mark the shark. He's so fifties to me. So 1950s. He has a very 1950s look about him. Every time I see him, all I can think of is the way the guys used to look back in the 1950s. I don't know why I'm getting that vibe from him. So Lindsay finds him incredibly attractive. And she says that what she really likes, what she thinks is very attractive in a man is his confidence. And I guess she sees that confidence in Mark. So she does find him very, very much attractive. So that's good because I was worried about that. The way she was going on and on at the uh, bachelorette party, I was kind of worried. But yeah, she finds him very attractive. So that's good. So let's move on to Katina and Olajuwon. So they go wedding attire shopping and... Olajuwon, he's he's a bit cocky. He's a cocky little guy. He he really is. Uh, he picked out a white suit and he was just strutting his stuff at the um at the store. You know, talking about how he he knows he looks good and you know complimenting himself and how good he looks. He's a cocky little fella. We get to meet Jasmina's mother. Um, she's a very sweet, quiet woman, and um, the fa Olajuwon's family, they think that his expectations are too high because uh, they're going to he's going to expect his wife to cook breakfast before she goes to work, uh, to have dinner waiting for him when he comes home. And he also wants her to work as much as he works. And he also wants them to have time to go to the strip club. So, yeah, his expect expectations are a little bit unrealistic now. Um. Katina also has tattoos. Like I said before, the one thing that I really like about Olajuwon is his tattoos. I think his tattoos are really nice. And she also has tattoos. Um, and so when it comes to their wedding day, Olajuwon says, you know, he's uh, in the groom's suite, you know, getting ready. And he said that he feels really cold, but he's also sweating. Um, Olajuwon, did you get a COVID test? Are you okay in that department? Because you're cold and you're sweating. His brother says um, he is so looking forward to that. Olajuwon is so looking forward to meeting his soulmate. But I don't know if he can find it or if there's really one out there. His brother is kind of rubbing me the wrong way just a tad bit um his brother is also married so when he said you know Lajuan, he's he's out there looking for his soulmate but i don't even really know if one really exists out there i don't know if he meant for a Lajuan or did he mean for anyone in general because he's married so i'm thinking he would think his wife his own wife was his soulmate and um 
Elijah has a brief breakdown. There's a moment when he just all of a sudden, she just starts crying and his best friend um, takes him back into the room and closes the door so they can have some privacy so he could talk to his friend. Now, Elijah friend seems like a really good friend. Um, yeah, he, he talked him off the ledge. And um, Elijah sister tells her, you know, she sees her brothers breaking down. And so she tries to kind of like get him pumped up and, you know, um, you know, get him going again. And she tells her brother, this is your destiny. This is your story. This is your life. And you got this. So he has a really good support system around him, except for that brother of his, a larger one he needed. So he goes out right before he's supposed to walk down the aisle. He's waiting for them to tell him, you know, when it's time for him to walk. And he's like, he needs support. He says, you know, when his people are around him, he's good. But then when everybody leaves and he's standing alone, he feels like he's going to break down again. And so he asks one of the producers for a hug and they give him a hug. So he goes, he walks down the altar I mean, he walks down the aisle. He's standing at the altar. And then when Katina shows up, when she walks down the aisle and he sees her, he's like, whoa, he's also very, very satisfied with his bride. So when she gets to the altar and she does look amazing, she looks really, really pretty. And, um, when she gets to the altar, he tells her repeatedly, constantly, he's telling her, you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. He keeps on telling her this over and over again. And then, um, as he's complimenting her, he says, um, well, I hope I, you like what you see. Cause you haven't said anything. I don't know if he was trying to be funny and I hope that he was, so I'm gonna let that slide, but it kind of seemed needy when he said that, like, you know, well, what about me? What do you think about me? But let's hope he was just being funny. He was just joking. He was just trying to, you know, um, uh, ease the tension a little bit. And she was like, Oh yeah, you look really handsome. She goes, and I'm just really nervous. You know, she was just really nervous and very much overwhelmed with everything. So Elijah one could not stop looking at her. So when the, the officiant is, you know, saying the speech, whatever they're saying up there, you know, the stuff that the family said about all of them, about both of them, um, Elijah one, his eyes are fixated on Katina. He cannot take his eyes off of that woman so they exchange their vows well he she reads hers and their, their own personal vows she reads hers and he said that he wasn't even going to read his because he didn't want the paper to get in the way and he actually I don't know if he memorized it or if he was just talking off the cuff but he gave a really good speech for not having you know to read it whatever he said um just spontaneously like that or I don't know if he memorized it it came out really good and he gave a really good uh, his vows were really really good so um again he tells her how beautiful she is and then when they go to uh, exchange rings he got real goofy and he got down on one knee and he was like will you marry me and she's like I just did so I didn't understand that I think that kind of ruined the moment when he did that it was so unnecessary and I understand that he wanted to do something kind of traditional in this very untraditional setting but it kind of ruined the moment and um she says, you know, that uh, she thinks that he is handsome, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, and then when they go off to be alone together, there was like this awkward silence at first between the two of them. And then he asked her for another kiss and she uh, relented. And then he just gulped down his champagne. And then after that, he was on a roll. He started talking. The floodgates were open. He could not stop talking. And he talked and he talked and he talked and he talked. And of course, I'm pretty sure that the producers edited this, edited this to make it look like he actually maybe talked longer than he actually did. But it looked like he talked for a good 30 minutes without stopping. That's what it seemed like. So, um, how do I feel about Katina and Olajuwon? Their wedding was nice. I mean, all their, I don't, that's another thing. I thought there was a time when I married at first sight, the weddings were different for each couple. But they all got married in the same exact venue, which was like outside. And I understand maybe because of COVID and stuff, that's why they held the weddings outside. But they were all exactly the same. Um, that's something else that I thought was different in the past. I don't know. Okay, so that's Katina and Olajuwon. I don't know why I'm overthinking that. It doesn't really matter. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think <laughs> I think Olajuwon's going to be a lot for Katina. I think he's going to be a lot. But we'll see. 
Let's move on now to Alyssa and Chris. Oh yeah, Alyssa and Chris. So they do the whole wedding attire shopping and um Alyssa purchased 10 dresses on her own. So that makes me think she spent her own money and bought 10 wedding dresses before she even started shopping um on the show. So she said that she reason why she bought 10 was because she wasn't sure if she was going to find one that she liked. She says that she's not high maintenance, uh, which means that she probably is very high maintenance. And she says that, you know, obviously I'm going to be really picky with my own wedding dress. Okay, but girl, why did you have to, excuse me, why did you have to buy 10? Why couldn't she just buy like three? And then, <laughs> oh my God. I've never seen that before. Anyway, so she ended up picking whatever dress she picked. And I don't remember. I don't even think it was any of the 10 that she bought. Oh, and she's also going to be wearing gold cowboy boots uh, with her wedding gown. Now, Alyssa is obsessed. She lives in Boston, okay? But she is obsessed with this whole country lifestyle. She she says her ideal wedding would have been in a barn, very rustic but chic. That would have been her, her like a, a wedding with set in this uh country motif that would have been her ideal wedding uh so she's gonna wear her cowboy boots and she says that she wants her her husband to also be like a cowboy and to enjoy the country living and I don't think he's like that I don't think Chris is like that at all I think Chris is very much a city boy so uh, Chris, he's with his boys and, you know, looking for his suit or his tuxedo or whatever. And he says that he doesn't like being lonely. And he says that marriage is not a band-aid on loneliness. It's a growth from where he's at now. I don't know what he means by that. I don't know what that means. He doesn't like being lonely and marriage is not a band-aid on loneliness, but it's growth from where he is now. I don't understand that. I understand the part where he says that, you know, he doesn't like being lonely and the cure to that is not to get married. Uh, that part I got, but I don't understand how it's a growth from where he's at now. Anyways. So when he said he doesn't like being lonely and the fact that he's been in a relationship ever since he was in high school, uh, it makes me think that, yeah, he has a, a huge fear of being completely alone. And if things don't work out between him and Alyssa, he's probably going to be dating like a week after or three days after decision day. He's going to already have moved on to another female. And I hope he's not going to do what our boy Ryan did uh, from Houston last season, where you were already on a wedding on a on a dating app looking for your next ex-girlfriend before decision day even came around so he just doesn't like being lonely and that's sort of worrisome I think everyone should not ever have an issue with being alone and there is a difference between alone and lonely because you can be in a crowd full of people and still feel lonely um I get that um but that kind of that's like a little bit of a red flag when he says he doesn't like being lonely um and so it sort of makes me feel like he always just has to be in a relationship just to avoid being lonely, not because he wants to be in a relationship. So anyway, he wants to better himself with a partner. And um, I think Chris is a little bit annoying, but I think him and Alyssa might make a good match or they may be too similar that they don't get along at all. Um, he's very overly um he's very overly analytical like he has to overanalyze everything when he was with his groomsmen or with his uh buddies looking for his tuxedo the way he was talking it was just so analytical and I think one of his friends asked him something about so are you doing this because they asked him something about um his emotions or how he was feeling and he was like I don't understand feelings I understand numbers I understand facts or something like that and I'm just like what what are you talking about who are you so yeah their wedding day is yet to come um lots of luck to them moving on to Noi and Steven Okay, so doing the whole wedding dress attire shopping and um, Stephen just got back from a four month road trip, y'all. He's the one that doesn't have a job and he's the one that likes to travel and he likes to be very adventurous, but he's about to be in a very committed relationship with a complete stranger, someone who enjoys to travel and he enjoys to run around and be free and not be tied down by things like a job. Uh, he's, yeah. 
starting a family is a big priority for him, he said. And um, Noi really does believe that the experts have found her her person. I really do hope so. Noi says that she was very, very specific about the qualities that she wanted in her husband. Like she wanted him to be kind and she wanted him to be caring and, you know, all of those wonderful uh, things that we all want in our partners. And um, she, she made it seem like she was very specific about the qualities of his personality, but she wasn't too specific with his looks. But then she says she, he had to be tall, dark and handsome. Um, they're both pretty adventurous because like I said, she was like running all running around all over the world, you know, chasing love and he's running around all over the United States trying to find himself. So they're both very adventurous people. Now, Noi, she's, as she's getting ready for her wedding, um, she starts to kind of freak out a little bit. Uh, she gets really, 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 really nervous. And, um, her friend is kind of like worried about her when they get on the, on the, um, the, the bus, I think that's going to take him to the venue. Yeah, she gets, she's like really, really nervous. So we have that wedding to also look forward to. Um, I think that Noi will be very, I think they will be pleased with each other when they do see each other. Um, I just don't know. I really hope that I was hoping when I was watching the, the matchmaking special that by the time that the wedding day came, that Steven would have already had a job. But it's the wedding day, and I don't think he has a job. So that's going to be really interesting. Anyway, oh, and something else that I noticed, they didn't exchange pre-wedding gifts like they normally do. So normally, like, when they're getting ready for the ceremony, um, they will send a gift to their uh, soon-to-be spouse. And that didn't happen this year either. Yeah, there's a lot of changes this year. In Married at First Sight. But anyway, that is my review of Married at First Sight, um, season 14, episode two. Thank you so much for joining me. If you made it this far, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know because you decided to spend your time with me and I appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will definitely be talking to you later. Bye. <laughs>